In this video, we'll take a look at the deep anterior forearm muscles. These deep anterior forearm muscles are the muscles that lie just underneath the pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. The muscle just underneath this superficial group is the flexor digitorum superficialis. So we'll take a look at that first. Flexor digitorum superficialis is the digit flexor located closer to the surface. This is sometimes called the flexor digitorum sublimus. Sublime is a verb that means to elevate to a higher degree of excellence, probably referring to the fact that this muscle is more superficial or higher. This muscle attaches to the humerus, ulna, radius, and fingers. Specifically, this muscle has two heads, a humeroulnar head and a radial head. The humeroulnar head originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the coronoid process of the ulna. The radial head originates from the proximal one half of the radius. The muscle fibers will come together to produce four tendons that will pass through the carpal tunnel and split distally to insert onto the bases of the middle phalanges of fingers two through five. It's kind of amazing when you see it, but the tendons will split to allow tendons of flexor digitorum profundus to pass through. When flexor digitorum superficialis contracts, it acts to flex the fingers at the proximal interphalangeal joints and the metacarpal phalangeal joints. If the muscle flexes hard enough, it will also help to flex the hand at the wrist. Note, this muscle will not flex at the distal interphalangeal joints. Its tendons do not attach to the distal phalanges. It's innervated by the median nerve which passes between the two heads, another possible site of entrapment. The flexor digitorum superficialis receives its blood supply from the radial and ulnar arteries. Flexor digitorum profundus is the deep flexor of the fingers. Profound means deep. It's probably intuitive to you at this point, but this muscle is located underneath or deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis. It attaches to the ulna and the fingers. Specifically, the flexor digitorum profundus originates from the anterior ulna and interosseous membrane. Its long tendons pass through the carpal tunnel and then through the split ends of the flexor digitorum superficialis tendons. It then inserts onto the bases of the distal phalanges of fingers 2 through 5. The lumbricals manus will also attach to these tendons in the palm and transfer the flexion forces to the fully extended fingers. This deep flexor acts to flex at the distal interphalangeal joints, proximal interphalangeal joints, and the metacarpal phalangeal joints. This muscle, by the way, is the only muscle that will flex at the distal interphalangeal joints of fingers 2 through 5. No other muscle will do this. The nerve supply to this muscle is quite interesting. The fibers that control digits 4 and 5 are innervated by the ulnar nerve. The fibers that control the movements of digits 2 and 3 are innervated by the anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve. Some people just say median nerve, while others will say anterior interosseous nerve. Its blood supply comes from three arteries, the anterior interosseous artery, the radial artery, and the ulnar artery. Flexor pollicis longus is named for what it does to the thumb when it contracts. Pollicis or pollux means thumb. Most of the time, when you see a muscle named longus and it controls the movement of a digit, it'll attach to the distalmost phalanx. There is one exception I can think of. Abductor pollicis longus attaches to the metacarpal of the thumb instead of the distal phalanx. This muscle sits right next to or adjacent to the flexor digitorum profundus. Flexor pollicis longus attaches to a bunch of things, the humerus, the radius, ulna, interosseous membrane, and thumb. Specifically, the flexor pollicis longus originates from the coronoid process of the ulna, the anterior radius, interosseous membrane, and 40% of the time from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Its tendon passes through the carpal tunnel, just lateral to the median nerve, and then inserts onto the distal phalanx of digit number one, the thumb. When it contracts, it flexes the thumb at the interphalangeal joint, and also the metacarpal phalangeal joint. It's the only muscle that will flex this interphalangeal joint of the thumb. 
It's innervated by the median nerve, and it receives its blood supply from the anterior interosseous and radial arteries. Finally, we have the pronator quadratus. The pronator quadratus is named for its appearance and for what it does. Some argue this muscle is the prime mover when it comes to pronation of the forearm. If you're right-handed, try to unscrew a long screw with a screwdriver and see what part of your forearm feels most tired. You might notice that your wrist feels fatigued first. That's because of this muscle. The pronator quadratus is a rectangular muscle that attaches to the radius and ulna. Specifically, the pronator quadratus has a superficial head and a deep head, both of which originate from the distal ulna and insert onto the distal radius. As the name implies, it will act to pronate the forearm when it contracts, with the superficial head contributing more to this action. The deep head tends to keep the distal radius held tightly to the distal ulna, keeping the head of the ulna locked into the ulnar notch of the radius. It's innervated by the nerve that passes over it, the anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve, or just plain anterior interosseous nerve. It receives its blood supply from the anterior interosseous artery. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.